Ladies and gentlemen, Variety welcomes you to Purpose, the Family Entertainment and Faith-Based Summit in association with Rogers and Cowan. Please welcome a spotlight conversation with Andrew Sugarman, Executive Vice President of Disney Publishing Worldwide, moderated by Andrew Wallenstein. It is my honor to welcome Andrew Sugarman, the Executive Vice President of Disney Publishing Worldwide here working on a, a really interesting piece of a, the very big Disney puzzle. Uh, but, you know, talk a bit about, you know, what, uh, I mean, basically, as I understand it, your division is creating the next generation of storytelling experiences. Uh, but as you look at the marketplace and what children are doing nowadays, I know from my own experience with my own six-year-old, it's very interesting watching him toggle between the hardcover book and the iPad. So as you look at this current marketplace, what are you seeing? So uh, it's interesting you mentioned print and digital at the same time. When we look at the overall children's publishing uh, market, we actually see that there is definitely a love by children and by parents for the tactile feel of a book. And that uh, is continuing to show strength. But at the same time, we're seeing amazing rapid growth on the digital side. And, uh, and that's obviously being driven by growth of mobile devices um, in children's hands and in parents' hands. And really, for every media and entertainment company to be um, uh, relevant, it has to have a strategy geared around what are they doing with mobile, how are they putting content in front of consumers, and how are they making it um, absolutely relevant um, for each franchise or for each, for each type of property. When we were looking at consumer insights, we found actually that the uh, device penetration in homes is changing significantly. Uh, just two years ago, 8% uh, of children had access to a tablet. And if you look today, that number has grown to 40%. So 40% of children have access to a tablet, and that really changes the fundamentals where the primary screen for children today is increasingly a smart device uh, or, or a mobile device, whereas for our generation, it's much more, it was a television. And as a result, these, these children are digital natives, and their ability to maneuver content and experiences is, is at a level that we could never imagine when we were at the same age. Um, so it's, it's, it's really an exciting time uh, to be thinking about how do you strategically target this type of an opportunity. Hmm. So you understand the market dynamics. How then, what, what is sort of the strategic focus for Disney publishing? How do you take advantage of all this? So we have uh, really established a leadership position in the world of print publishing. Uh, we are the largest children's publisher in the world, and we're looking to extend that leadership position from the world of print into the world of interactive and immersive digital media. And uh, to show you what we view as the opportunity, I believe we have a quick video that we can run you through um, that gives, us a, gives you a sense of what we're thinking. Hi, I'm Dory. When you're ready, say something and you'll hear your voice in whale. Cool, huh? Hey, JL, what's up? When a child opens up an app from Disney Publishing, the most beloved stories come to life like never before. With the swipe of their finger, they can actually take flight with their friends from planes. Ah! Scream along with Mike and Sully. Peek behind the scenes and soar beyond the stars in La Luna. We feel privileged to be a part of the journey that brings our stories to life in immersive new ways inspires imaginative play, and keeps our beloved characters constantly alive in the hearts and minds of a new generation of kids and families. With millions of downloads around the world, our award-winning apps can turn any time into story time. We invite you to join us as we write the future of interactive storytelling together. So it gives you a, a quick sense of, of what we're doing. And really what you see there is the rich portfolio of franchises that the Walt Disney Company has, uh, ranging from things like Doc McStuffins, to Star Wars, to Marvel, to Frozen. Um, really stories that um, have a lot of meaning to families today. And as we look at what 
what storytelling can be. We're combining these franchises with uh, amazing interactivity and play patterns and bringing those together um, resulting in, in digital experiences that are constantly pushing boundaries. Uh, this, this notion of innovation is critical to us. If I, I look back to 2010 when Steve Jobs um, introduced the world to the iPad, uh, Disney Publishing was there day and date with our very first interactive storybook and that was um, Toy Story. And uh, we actually were one of the first apps that could showcase what this device was capable of. And having this larger canvas to tell stories really changed the game for us. And um, the, the opportunity to now create content that was a bridge between a child and a parent, um, and, and the way that we could use technology to do that. For example, a parent could narrate the, the story to their child, and the story would capture that recording. So every time the child opened up the digital storybook, it would always be narrated by their parents. And so it creates these amazing opportunities to strengthen that, that notion of story time. So let's drill down a bit on some specifics here in terms of uh, formats, uh, the, the kinds of things that you're specifically doing, because that video just gives you a taste. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't I give a few examples of some of the products that we've created. Uh, the first is geared around Frozen. So I, obviously Frozen is a story. I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> don't let it go. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we, we really um, were in a fortunate position where Disney Publishing could um, uh, really introduce the world to the story. We launched this, um, this app two weeks before the release of the film. And it was a, a blending of a watch experience a read experience, an interactive experience that created a very unique integrated product and introduced the, the, the world of Anna and Elsa. Um, also, what we did was um, to, to make storytelling a more personal experience, we let the child actually rotate the uh, iPad um, and when they rotate it, they'll see it one time from Anna's perspective and when they flip it over, they'll see it from Elsa's perspective. Hmm. And that really gives the child the ability to see that cause and effect um, of storytelling. And uh, when we launched this product, it quickly went to number one in the United States for uh, top kids app, top, top entertainment app, and uh, has now reached number one in 100 countries around the world. So really showing the power of this type of storytelling. But building on that, uh, we actually have other Frozen products that we've introduced. Um, so Frozen Karaoke, um, available now so your children can sing these songs till the end of time because they need help with that they really need help with that um, so so what this this does um, to this notion of play pattern so um, the storybook deluxe really gives you a sense for the reading play pattern this one's obviously a singing play pattern and it gives the child the chance to um, experience the songs with the original an animation but then give them the chance to record it by following the bouncing snowflake um, and then we put the two together in the final product. So you then would watch a video of the original Disney animation with your child's voice singing the song. And it makes it, and I've done this, I have a 10-year-old daughter, you just want to hold on to it forever. It's such an, an amazing uh, output of the child's creativity. Um, and, and for those that are interested, there are duets. Um, so the, you can have a father-daughter or mother-daughter uh, uh, song as well. Um, and once again, this product was released two weeks ago and immediately went to number one in a number of countries and in a number of categories. Um, the third product that I wanted to show really demonstrates the notion of um, what is critical to Disney publishing, and that's the idea of extending content. We work with the content engines of the Walt Disney Company um, to bring their content to life in new ways. And this is a perfect example. 7D is a franchise being launched by Disney Channel um, in, uh, in, in the coming weeks. And working with them, we are actually introducing the world to 7D as of today. We have launched this app in the uh, Apple App Store, and it introduces the world to the seven dwarves that uh, make up 7D in a very fun, whimsical way. And it shows really the power of telling stories in totally different ways, from, from Storybook Deluxe, where you're reading, um, You've got karaoke where you're singing, you've got 7D where you're playing, all of which have story running through them. Hmm. 
It's a, a pretty incredible uh, assortment of, of IP that you're able to work with here. Yes, I would say we're very, very fortunate. It, uh, the, the, uh, the franchises that exist within the Walt Disney Company um, give us amazing opportunities. It's sort of a, an amazing uh, embarrassment of riches mm -hmm. to a certain extent, and that only became more so uh, when the acquisition of Lucasfilm uh, happened uh, last year, and Star Wars now became a part of our, our portfolio. So uh, we, we reported about a month ago uh, Star Wars Journeys. Talk a bit about that app. So, so Star Wars Journeys um, was really our first partnership with Lucasfilm in creating a format, a uh, storytelling format, where we could bring the saga um, to essentially a new generation of Star Wars fans but doing it in a, in a way that's very age appropriate. Um, in this case, it was for children aged six to eight and um, creating original art, interactivity, and doing it in a way where the story is tied to activity. So the more you learned about the story, the more you could do in the activity, the more you did in the activity, it would unlock story beats. And as a result, the child learned so much more about the mythology of this universe. Um, and, and in pushing the boundaries of innovation, we really looked at ways to um, have story unfold. So we have a thing called a 180 degree parallax. So as you move the iPad around, it actually changes the perspective as if you're looking through a window into the Star Wars universe. Uh, we have infinite zoom, we have unlocking story beats, all of that to create really a dynamic experience. And I think we have a, a, a clip that we can show you. So, so this is really um, a way to bridge. Many of us grew up with Star Wars, and it was a very uh, memorable part of our childhood. Um, children that are six to eight didn't have that same exposure. So this, these products are actually an amazing bridge between one generation to another, and having something that can be shared between, uh, for example, a father and a son, uh, or a mother and, and daughter, um, but in a way that is really conducive to, to what they both would expect from the franchise. Which should be mighty helpful when the new Star Wars movies come out. Uh, <laughs> fringe benefit. Uh, so in terms, uh, that's not all though. Uh, you've got some interesting new Star Wars applications to share as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, really when we think about storytelling and what children are looking for, what, what parents are looking for, um, we've created things that are uh, bookended, where you have a start and a finish, like Frozen. Um, we've created things where you can influence the story. And now we're creating products that the child can actually become the storyteller. We'll invite them in, we'll provide them with assets from our universe and give them the ability to reinterpret or reimagine what that world could be using their creativity, using their imagination. And this. This is really this notion of, of building, creating, making. And uh, the product that, that we're coming out with, so this product actually is releasing a week from today. And uh, we're really excited about it. It's called Star Wars Scene Maker. And what you can do in this product is you can, we, we've put uh, forth some of the most iconic scenes from the films. Um, we're gonna begin with three, but we're gonna have other ones coming in. And uh, here we've got Trench Run, the, uh, the uh, Cloud City Duel, where Darth reveals that he's Luke's father. Uh, and sorry if, if no one saw it, I'm sorry I gave that away. Um, uh, Spoiler alert. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, and then Endor. And what, what these allow the, the child or the family, um, I enjoy doing it, so for parents as well, is you can actually manipulate the vehicles, the ships, the characters, the props, the assets, the weapons, the voice dialogues. You can actually record your own voice saying different lines but putting a Darth Vader filter on it or a Stormtrooper filter on it. So you really can make your own film. You have cameras that you can put into different angles and you've got essentially a digital 
365-degree set, and the output of this is you're actually going to create a minute-long film that you can set music to, end credits, um, and then be in a position to share that film to your friends through YouTube, through Facebook, um, and it's, it's really, in many ways for me, uh, addictive in that what you can do with it is limitless. It's, it truly unleashes your creativity and the child's creativity in amazing ways. The next generation of George Lucas's could come through this app, potentially. Absolutely. So what, what I'm curious about is there's just tremendous amount of experimentation going on here. Uh, do you guys at this point feel like you understand what this new generation is doing, or is it still kind of a learning process for you guys where you're trying to figure this all out? So I would say that um, we've gotten a lot of things right, but there is this, this element of experimentation because the, there's a few things at play. One is that the technology is continually changing, the hardware, the software. You just saw last week uh, with Apple's WWDC announcement around iOS 8. There's a whole set of new features and capabilities that are, that are now possible. All of these things will influence what we can do with, with different experiences and storytelling. Um, and we're excited about that because we can continue to push boundaries. Um, the, the, the second is really that the consumer is continuing to shift in what they expect, what they're looking for, how they want to engage with content. And so we're, we're really watching closely on both sides and using that in what we build. But I would say that to date, the consumer is the primary driver of are they happy with what they're, they're seeing. And the rankings that we've seen um, around the world with number one rankings and, and sustained uh, positioning shows we think that we've, we've gotten a lot of things right and they're resonating with consumers. I mean, I'm curious about the data piece of this. Or is the nature of digital platforms such that you're able to get a very sort of sophisticated idea of what works and what doesn't? Um, I would... I would say that's evolving as well. Um, the capabilities to really uh, quantitatively get at what, what is um, working really well and resonating very well. We, right now, we, we use a lot of different inputs to get at that, um, ranging from consumer reviews, consumer star ratings, uh, working with fan groups, blog, uh, bloggers, to understand sort of what's trending, uh, working with media. Uh, to see um, what are reviews of different products that are out there and, um, and really tracking all of that together so we have a holistic picture um, and that we're not being skewed by, by um, sort of one-off data points that might take us down uh, the wrong direction. One more question for me before I open it up to the audience and you guys just raise your hand and we'll get someone with a microphone to you. Uh, I, I would imagine, you know, Disney being this vast uh, Hall of Fame assemblage of IP uh, that your biggest problem is kind of an embarrassment of riches, but how do you figure out who to work with, or is it, does it work the other way around? Does everyone from Marvel to, I don't know, ESPN come to you? How does that all work? So, uh, it, I would say it really works both ways. That, um, that at the Walt Disney Company, um, there is definitely a very strong uh, notion of collaboration between the different groups within the company. And the, just in the products that I showed you um, with 7D with the Disney Channel, Frozen with Walt Disney Animation Studios, um, Karaoke with Walt Disney Records, Lucasfilm, all of these are different parts of the Walt Disney Company and we have worked seamlessly in how we collaborate to build products that both reinforce those franchises but do them in very unique, innovative ways. Same thing goes with partnerships in other parts of the company in terms of technology capabilities that maybe don't sit within necessarily the Disney publishing organization, but definitely sit within the Walt Disney Company. And so I would say this, this element within the culture and within how we create great products is absolutely front and center at the Walt Disney Company. Well, as I look around at a room full of adults uh, and we talk primarily about kids, I'm curious, like, uh, to some degree, this is a unique challenge where you're training a audience uh, of kids to do something very different than their parents did it. Is that something you guys think about in terms of design, how to sort of get parents on board to understand something they don't really get? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. And in many ways, the consumer and the customer are two different groups. And 
the comfort level, you can put uh, an app that a parent struggles with in front of a child and they'll figure it out in 60 seconds. Um, and that is a challenge, that we, we are continually looking at design, um, user design, uh, gameplay mechanics, on what will resonate with the primary consumer, but that the customer who's buying the product also can relate to it and understand it. And we're looking at ways to make the output of products more understandable to parents. Uh, it's, gonna be, it's, it's a challenge, but it's definitely one that we're tackling head on. And I'm also curious in terms of, you know, we talk a lot about uh, issues relating to uh, as digital media starts to get more traction in the business, some of the core products like DVDs start to uh, erode. What is it like in terms of managing sort of the hardcover, you know, old school publishing side of the business? Are you seeing erosion yet? Does that go away in time? So I would say that um, looking at the print children's market, storybooks, uh, readers, middle grade, um, we actually are not seeing erosion. We're seeing there's growth coming from that part of the business. And I think that uh, a lot of it is geared around the notion that reading and learning to read and developing that love for reading over your entire childhood is still, in a parent's mind, really driven by the tactile feel of a book, holding a book in their hands. Um, and so we think that there's absolutely a place for traditional publishing in a child's bedroom and a new place for interactive and mobile um, storytelling experiences that will augment that, not replace it. And could there even be, and maybe there already is, packaging that kind of bridges the two? Yeah, so we are looking at ways for, for example, for parents that love a particular story or franchise that rather than saying, well, you should go to the bookstore and buy this book, and then after you're done with that, you can go home and go into a totally different store and buy another product. We want to give them the option that if they love, for example, Frozen, that they have the option of getting both a physical and a digital experience at the same time at one, at one stop. They don't have to go searching for lots of content or products out in the marketplace. Hmm. Okay, great. We've got time for questions. Just raise your hand and we'll get to you. Hello. Um, first of all, congratulations for the huge success of Frozen. Thank you. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. But um, I wanted to just actually share with you, rather than a question, I wanted to just share with you that I don't know how you guys did it, but <laughs> I sure would like to know someday. But um, my 18-year-old son, okay, and all his friends, they're all, they were all seniors. They all graduated. I actually heard every day my son singing let it go in the shower in his room he's dreaming let it go and in fact on his last last two days of school the whole class dedicated the song let it go they were all singing let it go seniors boys i am sure your son would <laughs> really appreciate you sharing so, <laughs> that with all of us here today you should yes. go home and tell him that yes anyway let me just really finish this um he wants to be a doctor surgeon so i can imagine him doing his patients in the middle of surgery seeing let it go that's how effective that song is and the success of it you're reaching out, not just to the little kids, you're reaching out to everybody. I think that is a good note to end on. How about a hand for Andrew Sugarman? Thank you.